Hi guys, it's Akshita here today. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is do's and don'ts of doing beautiful eye makeup. So let's get into the video without waiting any further. My number one tip would be to have a flawless eye makeup base. What do I mean by that? There are multiple eye primer that are available in the market, but you need not invest particularly in that. You can go ahead and use your regular primer and the other makeup base that you use for the rest of your face. That would be doing your skincare, maybe applying a little bit of eye gel, then go going ahead with your regular primer foundation or concealer you need not use both because it might become a little cakey depending on the discoloration of your eye if that discoloration is not that prominent you can choose a regular foundation and you can use a little bit of face powder to set it and you are sorted with your eye makeup base my tip number two would be if you are a newbie i think you should go ahead and do your eye makeup first and then you can go ahead with doing your skincare then uh, creating a makeup base for the rest of your face because when you are a newbie you don't have that much grab of how much the product might fall on your face and it's really difficult to get rid of an eyeshadow from your makeup base because uh, some of your makeup base is going to come out and, and then you'll try to reapply the makeup base on a particular area and that area is going to look a little weird because it's it's going to set on a different time than the rest of the makeup so i think you should go ahead and do just the eyes first and then go ahead with the rest of your face if you are doing a really complicated eye makeup look uh, like smoky eyes i think you should go with just the eye makeup first and then the rest of your face i bet it would be really really helpful uh, when there is a time crunch and you are doing an extensive makeup look tip number 3 would be to conceal your eyes like i mentioned sometime back you should conceal your discoloration as because if you have a coloration under or over the eye it can lead up to a makeup look which does not look as good as it could have been if you would have just concealed your eyes so try concealing your eyes first i know it seems a little weird when you are trying it for the first time but i assure you your eye makeup is going to look flawless and your rest of the makeup is going to come together when you do your eyes well my tip number 4 would be to use a round brush as opposed to flat brush when you want to blend an eye shadow what do i mean by that these are the round brushes and this is a flat one now when you want to blend an eye shadow you wouldn't want to use a flat brush because it's not easy to spread i mean you can make it work but why not to choose a simpler way out and then easily spread an eye shadow so that's exactly what i've done i've used a round brush to blend the shadow into my crease so if you want to use a flat brush it's only just to lay the product what do i mean by that you just take the flat brush pick up your product place the product in the area that you want to then you take a round brush and then simply blend the product wherever you want it because sometimes picking up a product and placing the product in a smaller area with a round brush is a little tricky i think in that sense you can use a flat brush but not to blend the product tip number 5 would be to always use tiny makeup product and then build up the product slowly instead of taking a lot of product and then it would be difficult to blend the product and in the smaller area i'll explain you what i mean by that so i'll randomly take any eye shadow that i want so this is the eye shadow right if i take a lot of eye shadow first has a lot of hole it's difficult to blend out a lot of product in one area instead you can take a really tiny amount and then slowly build up the product like you want to see i can add more product to this but i can't remove this makeup from the area this is the simplest trick but sometimes we just tend to miss the point and then we take a lot of product because we are in rush and then we try and blend and blend and blend and it's not blending one eye will start looking like a raccoon and the other one is just makeup less and and you're just scared like how will i balance both of these together because one is not looking nice and other one is a blank canvas and i still have to build up on it so my advice would be to take a very tiny amount of product and then start building on the eye shadow instead of taking a blob and then messing up your makeup i bet that you of you are going to hate my next tip but it is what it is and it's a fact if you use a black color liner on your waterline your eyes start looking smaller instead if you want your eyes to look bigger you can use a nude liner or a white liner in that way your eye looks bigger so that was my tip and you decide if you really want to use a coal and give a sultry look make your eyes a little smaller but in turn it does look sultry or you want to give an open eye 
my look and use a nude color or a white color liner to make it look bigger my next tip is the favorite one if you don't have almond shaped eyes or you don't have round eyes and you want to give an illusion that you do have them then what you can do is use your liner to give it the kind of shape that you really are looking for for example i have i've simply made a line with the liner but what i've done is i've kept it thinner in the inner corner made it a little thicker and then ended it where my eyes end this will give an illusion of a sultry eye and that is exactly what i was going for if i wanted to make my eyes look a little round then what it is i would increase the thickness So I was pretending to have mascara on both of my eyes when I forgot to place mascara on the left side of my eyes. <sighs> Now that we have balanced mascara eye look on both of our eyes, let's go ahead with the next point. Going back to the point, if I wanted to make my eyes look a little rounder, I would keep my eyeliner thin in the inner corner and the outer corner and then make a thicker eyeliner in the middle part so that it ends up looking round. Likewise, if you want your eye to look a little snatched, you can go for foxy eyeliner or the cat eyeliner. My next tip would be to apply your glitter with your finger as opposed to a brush. I'll give you a demo right now. So here I'm picking up this glitter with my brush. Okay, I'm placing it over here with my brush. As opposed to if I pick up with my finger, I don't think that's a lot of product. But you can understand the difference in the intensity that it gives. So this is the live example that you should always pick up your glitter with your finger and not your brush. If you still want to use your brush because for whatever reason that you feel like, simply take your makeup fixing spray and then spray it on your brush. And then you pick up your liner with the brush that is soaked with your makeup fixer. Because it has a makeup fixing spray on it, it will give an intense look. Then this, this will also stay put for a really, really long time since it has the makeup fixer spray on it. My next tip is really, really important, and everyone should take it really seriously. Is that do not share your eye makeup with anybody. What I mean by that, not even with your sister, not even with your mother, nobody, because you might infect their eyes by sharing the product that you're using on your eye, or vice versa. Nothing is worth having or giving an eye infection. So please be careful with that. Don't share a makeup product or don't use anybody else's makeup products. It's really risky. On the same note, when you go to try out a particular product. product in the store make sure that you don't directly apply it on your eye because there are a hundred people who would have used it or if not i'm sure the sample product is lying in a lot of mess there are a lot of hands that go into the product and you really don't want to put that product on your eye and for that matter any kind of makeup product that you are trying in the store except for a foundation should not directly go on your face so please 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 be careful with that my tip number 10 is a tip because i really don't know who started this weird thing you should never pump your mascara it is not helping you in any way instead if there is a lot of product you can wipe it on the mascara tube itself instead of pumping the mascara because it's really not helpful instead you are just pumping air into your mascara which is going to hamper the longevity of the product stop it my next tip again is that tip which most of us do not look into and it's really harmful which is never use an expired product as silly and simple as it sounds but few of us do not keep a note of when you purchase that particular lipstick or mascara especially mascara you should technically throw it away in 7 to 8 months make sure you are getting rid of the expired product in your makeup kit let's move on to the eyebrows your eyebrows are usually two tones lighter than your natural hair color if your hair is colored you can surely go two tones lighter or two tones uh, darker than your hair color i assure you it's going to look nice if you see my eyebrows today it's two tone lighter than my hair color and like that it looks natural it does not look fake the so tip number 13 is my personal favorite this is a tinted eyebrow gel and this is a clear mascara no color whatsoever So while back I purchased this tinted eyebrow gel whenever I used to put it on my eyebrows it used to look dark as hell and I was not liking that look it looks really really fake so I thought I should buy a clear uh, eyebrow gel but sadly either the clear eyebrow gel is too pricey majority of the time it's unavailable so what i did is i bought a clear mascara instead of a clear eyebrow gel because if it can keep your eyelashes upright then i think it can keep my eyebrow hair in place and 
up till now this has worked well this is a cool trick if you really are looking for something that keeps your eyebrow hair in place the very 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 important tip is never rub your eye skin when you are removing your makeup after some time the skin around your eyes is going to wrinkle a lot and uh, you would just want to kick yourself for not listening to me this is your reminder to stop rubbing the skin around the eyes please be very very gentle with your eye and with this we come to the end of this video i really hope you like this do's and don'ts video it was really really fun and if you like this video you know the drill like comment subscribe and share it with your friends and family and if you like this video comment down and let me know i will do more do's and don'ts of makeup thank you for watching stay tuned bye